When you develop APIs with any API framework, such as Django REST framework or Django Ninja, you're often going to need to share information about the API and its structure with other people in your organization, such as front-end developers that might be developing React or Vue.js applications, and also with mobile developers and any other applications that are integrating with your API. So generating API documentation is really important to be able to do that in an easy and repeatable manner. It's important for people that want to connect to your API, and that's what we're going to look at in this video. Now I'm on the REST framework page for documenting your API, and as it says here, a REST API should spend almost all of its descriptive effort in defining the media types used for representing resources and driving application state. So REST Framework provides a range of different choices for documenting your API. We're going to look at a couple of these, but what we're going to actually do in this video is use this one here. It's called Django REST Framework Spectacular, and that is an open API 3 schema generation library with focus on extensibility, customizability, and client generation. So we're going to use that in this video, and we also have some other options. This one here, I believe, is yet another Swagger generator, and that's a Swagger slash Open API 2 generation tool that's implemented without using the schema generation provided by Django REST Framework. And that will generate these kind of pages that you see here. So if you want these kind of things, and these come out of the box in frameworks like FastAPI, and if you're using Django Ninja, then you can use one of these packages in order to do that. We're going to focus on Django REST Framework Spectacular. I'll leave a link to this page if you want to know more about this, and if you want to look at any other packages. But we're going to go to the GitHub page on this package. Two and a half thousand stars nearly, so that's quite important, it's quite good. It's well used in the Django community, and it provides sane and flexible OpenAPI 3 schema generation for REST Framework. So let's go to the README, and we're going to find out how to install this. So let me just scroll down here past the features, and we can look at the installation. So to install this using pip, we can simply copy this command. I'm going to go back to VS Code, and we've got the terminal open here. I'm going to paste in that command, and we can remove the dollar sign at the start of that, to install DRF Spectacular into the Python virtual environment. Now once that's installed, what we can do is go back to the documentation, and we can add it to installed apps. So let's go to settings.py here, and in settings.py, we're going to find the installed apps list. And at the bottom of that, let's just add that below Django Silk. DRF Spectacular, once it's on the installed apps, what we can do is go back here and we're going to add this setting to the REST framework setting. Now the setting is default schema class and we can set that to the auto schema class from DRF Spectacular. So let's go back to settings.py and our REST framework settings were at the bottom of this file. So after the default authentication classes, we're going to add a new setting for default schema class and we're going to set that to auto schema. And we can go back again to the documentation and the final setting you can add is spectacular settings and that provides some metadata about your project for example the title and description of the project and the version number of the api and so on we're going to paste some settings in here so at the bottom just underneath rest framework we can add spectacular settings and i'm just going to add some generic titles and descriptions here and we are on version 1.0.0 now after adding these settings what we can do is go back to github and there's a section on actually using this, and it's called Take It For A Spin. And there's a command we can use here called Spectacular. So basically, Django REST Framework Spectacular, it's going to add this manage.py command called Spectacular, and that generates a schema.yaml file. So what we can do is just basically run this. I'm going to copy this command. And if we go back to the terminal at the bottom here, we can go to the terminal and run python manage.py Spectacular. And again, we can get some color on this, and we can specify the output file of schema.yaml. And when we run that, I think we're getting some warnings and errors here, but it has generated a schema.yaml file. Now you can look through these if you want. I'm not sure what any of these are, but if you know, let me know in the comments. What we're going to do is look at the schema.yaml file and you get some metadata about your API. And this metadata conforms to the Open API version 3.0.3 .3 specification. And once you've generated this file, what you can do if we go back to the documentation here is add these URL patterns. Now basically the URL patterns that you see here for the Spectacular API view, the Swagger view and the Redoc view, these are going to serve your schema directly from your API. And that means that other developers can connect to your API and they can actually view that schema. So what we're going to do is basically copy the import statement here and let's go back to our project URL configuration. So if we go back to urls.py in our project, at the top here, let's import these classes. And then we're going to add them to the URL patterns. So at the bottom of URL patterns, I'm going to give myself some space here and we can paste the three of these in. So there's three patterns here and two of them are optional. So let me have a look at what's been pasted here. So API slash schema, 
That's going to load up the spectacular API view. Sounds really good, and we're going to see that in a second. We also have some optional user interfaces here for the Swagger UI and for the Redoc UI, and these are going to look a lot better than this one. So let's now see an example of that now. We're going to run the server, and we're going to go back to our API on the browser. So let's go back to the browser, and I'm at localhost 8000 slash API, and you can see the new endpoints at the bottom here. So if we go to slash schema here, we're going to see that it downloads our api.yaml file. So it's basically going to take this API or this schema.yaml file here, and it's going to download that when we visit that endpoint. So that might be useful if you want to share your API schema and other developers and clients can connect to that. What we can also do is go to the actual UI for these. So for example, the Swagger UI is going to look a little bit better than just downloading a YAML file to most people. So this gives us some documentation about our API and the different endpoints that the API contains. So we can see our API endpoints for the token endpoints, for our orders and products. And because we're using those generic views, you can see all of the different request types, get requests, post requests, put, patch and delete requests. And you can also see the dynamic parameters such as the product ID that's expected in the URL. So that's going to be very useful for people that are connecting to your API and they want to perform some actions with that API. Now I want to show a couple of things here. If we go to the get products endpoint, what this is going to return is a list of products. And because of our serializer that's attached to this view in Django, we can actually see a demo or an example of the schema that's going to be returned from this endpoint. So we have a list of items and we can also see the schema for each object in the list. They are expected to have description, name, price, and a stock number. And what is in that schema is actually derived directly from the serializer for that view. So if we go to the product serializer, you can see the three of these. And Django REST framework and this spectacular package knows about the data types associated with each field. So it gives you information on that as well. And if we look at the create endpoint, and that's the post request to the same URL, you can see an example schema for the request body this time. So when you create a new product, obviously you need to send the data in a post request and that's going to be in the request body. And again, we get an example of the expected data. And if we scroll down here, you can see we also get an example of the response body that's sent back after we create that new product in the database. And finally, if we go to, let's say, the delete request, you can see that the response body is blank. It contains no response body and that's that 204 response code. So you get information about the types of request and response bodies that you're expecting to have and to send. And you also get information about status codes and also parameters in the URL. So this is very useful and it's very easy to do this with just a few lines of code. We install Django REST Framework Spectacular and we add the default schema class to the REST Framework settings. And then we add these URL patterns to actually get the schema file and also to view the schema's Swagger UI and also the Redoc UI. Let's take a quick look at that just before we finish the video. So if we go to slash API slash Redoc, and I think I've forgotten to add slash schema into the URL. But when we go to this page, we get this documentation here. And this is just a different documentation type for our API that we can then share with other developers and other clients. So it's going to have a lot of the same information, but just presented in a slightly different way. So you can check that out, but I'm not going to waste your time going through that. That's going to be basically all for this video. We've seen how easy it is to generate API documentation for our Django REST Framework APIs using the DRF Spectacular package. And we know there's some other packages out there if you want to try some of those out as well. In the next few videos, we're going to pivot and we're going to look at how to filter data that's sent back in responses. And we're also going to look at how to search and order across our data. Now, Django REST Framework provides built-in utilities for these tasks, and we're going to see these in the upcoming videos. Thanks again for watching, guys. If you've enjoyed and learned anything, give the video a thumbs up. And if you want to support our channel, then check out the coffee page that we have in the description. Any donations there are greatly appreciated. And thanks to everyone who's contributed so far. And we'll see you in the next videos.